Hello and welcome back to the Dan Cave and welcome back to another video build. Uh, so this time I am going to build the Great Wall Hobbies 144th scale Avro Vulcan uh, Kmart 2 to be precise. So this was the very last uh, completed model of 2021 and this is the first video build of 2022. Uh, so it's just there on screen. Uh, that's the completed one, obviously. Uh, so there's going to be a single part, going to cover all the major bits of the build. Uh, so, you know, the kind of prep, assembly, prime, paint, decals, weathering, and some uh, final shots. Uh, so yeah, so sit back, uh, put your feet up, all the usual stuff, enjoy the video. Uh, before we jump to the content, if you've not subscribed, uh, if you'd like to do so, it would be greatly appreciated. And uh, drop a like if you can. Feel free to leave a comment and get in touch. Uh, always happy to answer any questions if you guys have got any. Uh, so thanks for watching so far and let's switch over to the content and I'll be back later for a little bit of a summary and conclusion at the end. So uh, sit back and enjoy. So this is it. This is the uh, Great Wall Hobbies of RAF Vulcan Kmart 2. Uh, so there's not a huge amount of stuff in the box, uh, but I will say it is very neatly packed. Uh, to, to the, I suppose the bulk of the kit is the upper and lower delta sections. Uh, so you've got the complete kind of tip to tip uh, for the upper and lower uh, and it is packed in quite nicely so you've got one the lower section uh, at the top of the box and then there's a separate insert uh, which is uh, for the lower bit uh, so decal sheet is fairly small there's not a huge amount on it uh, but decals look nicely printed uh, nicely in register yeah, they're, they're quite pleasing to the eye. Uh, so a couple of small sprues, uh, some of the additional bits for the tanker variant. So that's one half of the pretty much entire airframe. Uh, you've got a few bits like the uh, landing gear, wheels, uh, the fin, all nicely molded and separately packaged which is always nice to see and then with the separate insert underneath you get the other half of the fuselage uh, you also get a stand for the kit which is I suppose a rare inclusion these days it used to be very common but uh, not so much these days so uh, as is always the case uh, start with removing some stuff from the sprues uh so to put the two fuselage halves together doesn't it there's not a huge amount required uh there's some very nicely molded intakes uh so they are molded as a single piece uh so i'm just test fitting them to see how they fit and they do fit quite nicely so they are molded as one complete piece, uh, which is good from the point of view of there's no internal seam lines, uh, but it does make them a little bit more difficult to paint. So I'm just going to mount these on uh, some coffee stirrers and we'll pop them over to spray booth and give the intake trunking a coat of white paint. I think I've used the Hataka Anti-Flash White, uh, which came in the modern Royal Air Force set, which is the, the, the paints that I'll be using for this build. So they've been done. Once they've been done and let dry for a bit, uh, they're easily fitted into the lower section of the airframe. Uh, there's a small instrument panel as well, which goes in. So that's got a couple of control columns. Uh, so that was also given a quick coat of, I think it gave it a coat of BS Light Aircraft Grey. To be honest, you're not going to see very much through the canopy glass. 
uh it's it's quite small it's quite thick so a little bit of nose weight is needed on this kit or it'll be a tail sitter so i'm just using some stainless steel balls that i've got and dropping them into the nose section uh, so they've been glued in with some ca glue so as you can see i've used a bit of traditional tube glue uh, just to pick up the main kind of attachment points it's got a slow drying time uh, and then i'm using tamiya extra thin to run around all the external seams so i should give a good kind of strong bond on all those parts uh, and as is usual just run the ca glue into the gap squeeze it together maybe use a closed peg or whatever type of clamp you need but all those parts do go together very very nicely uh, minimal gaps there'll be a little bit of sanding work afterwards once it's nicely cured but they do go together pretty well so once that ha once has had some uh, appropriate cure time, uh, it's time to break out the UMP thinny sticks. Uh, so we're starting with a relatively coarse grade, just to knock down uh, those seam lines, and we'll then progress on through uh, finer grades just to smooth that all out, and probably bring in the UMP buffing stick as well. Uh, I do find that the used uh, 240 thinny sponge, once they're a little bit used, uh, they are actually very, very useful at kind of getting the, the worst of the scratch marks away. So the wing leading edges also get a little bit of treatment. Uh, it's a kind of a similar process. Use a variety of... Uh, sanders sticks sponges whatever you need all to remove uh what was actually not a bad seam line it really just needed a little bit of sanding back just to smooth out the edge uh, almost no filler required on that seam so next up there is a few of the smaller bits to be added. Uh, so there's the little nose piece, which is added with some Tammy Extra Thin. And then the two sections of the canopy. A little bit surprised it, it was molded in two sections. Uh, I'm not really sure you'd probably ever want it open. Well, I was saying that, in, in, <laughs> interestingly, the kit does actually include two pilot figures in 144 scale. But as ever, it won't be open on mine. Uh, so there was a little bit of filler required uh, at the join between the upper and lower sections uh, on the underside. Uh, so that was done using uh, Ravel's model filler. Uh, once dry, sand it back and any of the missing detail uh, is then rescribed using the Tamiya scribing tool which i think has got the 0.2 mil 0.25 mil something like that so once i'm happy with that uh it's time to put the two halves of the fin together so they are joined just using some Tamiya extra thin Run it into the join line, give it a nice squeeze. And that's set aside to cure. Uh, so there's a number of pieces that go on the underside. So there's the Bombay doors. And that fits in quite nice and snugly. And then there's the engine pods on either side. Uh, so we've used a little bit of tube glue uh, on the locating points. And then I'll run some extra thin around the edge. Just to get them to uh, cure nicely. 
So there is a separate tail piece uh, on the underside for the tanker version. So there's the, the lower fairing. And then on just over that, you fit the uh, air to air dispense unit. So using a little bit of traditional tube glue just to attach the rudder and fin. So once all that's been nicely cured for a while, uh, it's time to start the priming process. Uh, so it's going to be primed with UMP gray primer uh, using a UMP Apex airbrush running at about 25 to 30 PSI. Uh, so I'm just using the Tamiya anti-static brush just to rub off any of the last dust and get rid of any static on the surface. So it's the usual process for airbrushing, nice thin light coats, build up that coverage gradually. And as you can see, after a couple of passes, that gray is starting to build up nicely. And that will dry to a nice matte finish, which will give a nice base for the Hataka acrylics that I'm going to use later on. So I've added a couple of little stubs of matchsticks into the landing gear base. So that just gives me something that I can sit the model on. Uh, so it's not sat on any of the paintwork. So once I'm happy with the lower uh, coverage of the primer, I can move on to covering the top. And that's the same process in the top. Nice light coats, slowly building up that coverage. And while you're doing that, don't forget to do the, uh, the landing gear doors and any other additional bits as well that need priming. So first color to go down, uh, so there's a two-tone underside on this scheme. An aft section of the airframe underneath is going to be in white. Uh, so that's done using Hataka's anti-flash white. Uh, so I'm just infilling this into the gray slowly to give it that kind of slightly patchy kind of look, give it a little bit more kind of tonal variation to it. Uh, so I'll just build that up slowly in sections. Uh, so I've not done anything like pre-shading on this. I'm just going to use the the kind of grey as a as a base to give some kind of tonal variation as I build up the white. But it is the same process as always. So slowly building up those coverage coverage areas. Nice light coats. Um, because it's nice and light, by the time I finish on one wing tip, the other wing tip is already dried. So you can kind of work back and forth. Uh, if you're given heavier coats, you might need to leave the model sit for 10 to 15 minutes to flash off. But with the way I'm doing this white, it, it's drying very, very quickly because they're very thin, very light coats. Uh, so the UMP Apex is absolutely perfect for this job. Uh, the the Hataka acrylics, I do find they're a little bit thick and do need a little bit of thinning. Uh, so I've used UMP's uh, Universal Airbrush Thinner. Uh, I think I've probably added about 25% to the color cup just to thin it down a little bit. So this white section extends forward up to the, uh, basically the front of the bomb bay. And I'll just make sure there's good coverage of that. Let it overspray a little bit and then I'll mask that up and then we can move on to painting the light aircraft gray underside. So as you can see, the result is 
good color white but it's got a little bit of kind of tonal variation so that's that's kind of given by the the gray uh the gray primer that's underneath so it's not a solid monotone white uh the little bit of weathering later on will also add to that as well so i've gone and masked all that up once it was nicely cured and now i can move on to the light aircraft gray So the light aircraft gray goes on all the underside and wraps up the side of the forward fuselage a little bit as well. So make sure you get your demarcation line nicely covered and in the right place. So unlike unlike you know painting a car body, you don't necessarily want to be doing kind of full color sweeps across it you are trying to kind of build up that paint in a well basically in a slightly patchy way just to give a little bit of kind of variation to the paint again you know for 144 scale you don't necessarily want too much uh, in that small scale when you look at reference picks it wouldn't be as obvious or at least not for me anyway So once I've been once I'm happy with that light aircraft grey, the underside is all masked up sufficiently, and um, we can lay down some uh, BS medium C grey across the top, and that'll be the grey color for the camouflage scheme. Uh, so it's a mixture of medium C grey and BS dark green on the top. So we'll just give it a complete coat of the medium C grey. So we will be coming back to the medium sea gray a little bit later. Uh, so it gets, yeah, it's first complete coat uh, and that'll be a case of laying out uh, the camouflage pattern for the green. Now, the, this didn't go probably as well as I wanted. So the first attempt, uh, which we're just about to get to, was using some blue tack sausages, which I have done before, and it has worked quite well before. Uh, but on this occasion... So the, the paint went on fine, so the green has gone down fine. Uh, I'm using a piece of card just to try and limit the amount of overspray and kind of bounce. So I am running at relatively low pressure. Uh, so it shouldn't be too bad anyway, so it's probably about 15 PSI. And just kind of filling in the areas that are supposed to be in the BS dark green. And then at various points I decided to just freehand it, not use the shield I was using earlier. and just gradually build up uh, the green sections of the camouflage scheme. Now I have, I have used this method in the past. Uh, it can work okay. Uh, I kind of went away from it because I kind of preferred some other methods I was using. Uh, in some cases that was just pure freehand, in some cases that was making uh, my own paper templates but for some reason I decided on this kit I was going to go down this route so we'll just keep going keep laying down the green keep filling in the sections we need it's kind of beginning to look like the, the pattern I want uh, I can already see there's a few areas of overspray because uh, I've kind of stopped using the shield as I was working through. Those will need a little bit of touch up later on. Uh, I will get back to that at some point. At least that's the current plan in my head at the moment. But nonetheless, continue to fill in those green areas. Same process, nice thin, light passes of green. 
running fairly thin uh, attack pain, probably thinned about 30%, uh, running at relatively low pressure through the UMP Apex. So it is the Hataka red line that I'm using, so that's their acrylic ready for airbrush line. So just carrying on, looking for bits that I've missed, trying to make sure I get all the kind of awkward angles, get all the right little spots done. But I... Once I took off the mask, I just wasn't happy with that. It just didn't look right. The, the green areas were far too thin. It didn't quite represent what I wanted. However, my first attempt at this to fix it was to break out the H&S uh, Infinity with a 0.15 needle and freehand the areas I wasn't too best pleased with. So as you can see, I've kind of made an attempt on the right wing already. But as I'm doing it, I know in my own head, I'm not entirely happy with it. I don't think it's quite, just doesn't look right. It's not the right definition on the green. The green areas are a bit too thin in a lot of parts. And the bits I'm freehanding over are not quite, the, the soft edge is too soft for the scale. So I'm just sat there thinking, I don't think this looks right. And so it becomes decision time. Uh, sometimes you need to just go, right, I'm not happy with that. Break out the BS medium C grey. And cover a lot of it with grey again. And we'll go back and start from scratch. So the attack paints are reasonably thin, uh, but they do cover okay. Uh, so just going back over everything, relatively thin, light coats, we'll gradually build it up. And as you can see, we've almost completely obliterated any of the green work that's already been done. Still showing through a little bit, but we'll get another couple of passes and that will clear everything away. And we can go back to figuring out how we're going to mask out this camouflage scheme in a better way. So I think definitely at this scale, uh, I'm not. It's not going to be possible to see uh, the soft edge that clearly defined. It needs to be a much harder edge. So I decided to go back to a method I used before uh, in the blend and build. Uh, so I'm just using a photocopy of the color callout from the instruction sheet, which, as it happens, is in 144th scale. And that's going to get placed on the appropriate section of the wing and fuselage that I need. So we'll just tack that down with uh, some masking tape at the edges, maybe a bit of blue tack here and there. But we're trying to get that paper edge as close to the surface as we can to try and get a not a hard edge, but a very, very faint soft edge. And as you can see, because it's come straight from the plans, this will be pretty much an exact copy of what's on the color callouts. So it is, in theory, a lot more accurate compared to the, you know, the blue tack sausage method or freehanding it. Should be a much closer representation. So the key thing is to make sure that the edges uh, line up. And interestingly, on the color call edge, you can see where the panel lines are and the various control surfaces. So you can get it lined up, you know, pretty accurate to how the, the, the drawing is. Uh, just get a tape down at the very edges. There'll always be a few bits in the middle. You'll need to tack down with either some more masking tape or some blue tack. So we get it over to the spray booth and we're back with the... BS dark green again and as you can see we can run around I can run around those areas a lot quicker than I did in the first attempt and I can build up that green color a lot quicker so 
So again, same process again. It's relatively light passes, uh, but it's much easier to do uh, with this type of mask because you're not worried about overspraying into some areas. You will get a little bit a oh, little bit of overspray under some of the lifted edges so that is something to watch out for and that is something that needed a little bit of correction on this kit but i'll talk about that a little bit later when we get to that point so as you can see the green is going down absolutely fine uh this was a lot quicker than the first version so once that's had about an hour's drying time uh, it's time to get in with the tweezers and start lifting up all those masks. And as you can pretty much already see, that edge on those masks is a lot more well-defined compared to the first version and definitely compared to the freehand version. Uh, and I can basically start removing all the rest of the masking tape. So there are... So there was a couple of areas where there was a little bit more overspray from the green. Uh, so I used some of the already pre-cut templates to go back and just touch up some of the gray areas. But that's an easy enough fix to make once you've done the, done the work already of cutting out the templates from the color call out. Uh, it's easy enough to go and do those corrections. So some of the some of the areas that were uh, left behind on the template were reused to mask up some of the green so that I could correct some of the grey where there was a little bit of overspray uh, and a little bit of lack of definition in a few places. So that was easy enough to do and that basically kind of fully completes the, the camouflage scheme. There's always a few little touch-up spots. But once all that is done and the paint's given some time to cure, it's straight on to the deckling process. Now, there's not a huge amount of decals on this scheme. There's a few, uh, I guess, marking stripes for the aerial refueling on the underside. And then the main insignia, which are only on both wings and forward fuselage. So it is the standard usual uh decal process so off to the left i've got some warm water i uh, got my ump decal solutions i think i only use the ump normal on these decals because that's all they need and they lay down absolutely fine Just using a brush just to make sure they line up correctly. The insignia go down using a little bit of UMP normal and I think a little bit of UMP strong as well. Uh, just to make sure they sink into the panel lines. And there's me getting my head in the way. But we'll just give them a little bit of the decal solutions. And these decals go down absolutely fine. Uh, so there's no clear coat. There's nothing. These decals are going straight down onto the paint. Uh, so I'm using a heat gun as well. Uh, just to accelerate that conforming process. A little bit of decal solution. A little bit of heat. It softens the decals. Gets them to conform. And that heat just accelerates the process. A little bit and just waving the heat gun about a bit uh, just keeping it a good distance from the kit because uh, it's pretty hot that's on the lowest heat setting but it is still pretty hot I've used a hairdryer in the past but the problem with a hairdryer is it tends to blow everything off your desk uh, so the heat gun is a little bit less intense in terms of airflow but it has got a higher temperature, so you do need to balance kind of both. However, all those decals have gone down. 
absolutely a treat. Uh, and I think I'm happy enough with the outcome at this stage. Uh, so Kate will be given a satin coat. Once that's got time to cure, we can move on to the weathering stage. Uh, so I'm going to use the UMP water-based washes. Uh, so I'm using a mixture of UMP dark dirt and light dirt. So mainly using the dark dirt to highlight mainly the control surfaces. Uh, so basically just decanted a small amount using a thin liner brush. Let the capillary action kind of work into the panel lines, but I'm also allowing a little bit to get onto the rest of the surface because I'll blend that in a little bit later and doing the same on the underside. So it's not excessive, it's just a little bit of highlighting. I mean, you could completely coat, you know, do like a sludge wash with these, uh, but I don't, think that's, I don't think that's necessary on this kit using a little bit of light dirt, uh, the kind of central part of the upper wing, looking at reference pictures. It was a little bit kind of more noticeable kind of color variation and panel lines in the pictures I've seen. So I'm going to use some light dirt just to highlight that. Also picking out some kind of key areas on the underside uh, to add a little bit of blended color. So I'm just dotting around some UMP light dirt in and around behind the, the landing gear bays, central fuselage, in and around the engines, basically anywhere that's likely to accumulate more dirt. And then of course the, the refueling station, the air to air refueling station, that's also likely to see some more debris and dirt accumulation. So that's given a little bit of light dirt as well. So that wash can be left for 20 minutes, half an hour to dry. Once it's had a chance to dry, we're going to come back with a little bit of water and a piece of kitchen roll. So it's basically just a piece of damp kitchen roll. I'm going to use that just to wipe off the excess dirt. That will also move some of the, the kind of core pigments about. It will give you a little bit more of a blended color. Uh, it'll kind of, it will stain the satin coat a little bit, but that's exactly what I'm looking for. But then you can get a little bit more, more water with a cotton bud. You can be a little bit more precise in the areas that you want to remove the wash from. And of course, if there's areas that you're not uh, entirely happy with, you can go back and add more wash or you can remove even more. Now, of course, with, with a satin coat, you're, you're probably not going to remove all of the wash. Uh, it'll always leave some kind of staining, but that's you know, pretty much exactly the, the kind of look I'm aiming for. It just adds that <clears throat> color variation. I'm looking for so same process on the underside we're just wiping the remnants of the wash in the direction of the airflow because that will give that kind of simulated streaking effect and you can see the way that kind of central area around the bombay has been nicely stained uh, by the use of that wash so we can use the cotton bud just to clean up around the control surfaces And we just keep going until I'm happy. Now, it is possible to go even more. You can add more colors. You can add more depth. Uh, you can seal it in and then use other products as well. But for me, in this scale, a little bit of staining. Uh, a little bit of weathering just kind of adds to the overall look. So very final stages. Uh, landing gear have been added. Jet exhaust have been added. And now I'm just adding the landing gear doors with a little bit of CA glue.
So they are uh, perfectly formed, I think, on this kit, and they fit absolutely perfectly. Nice little locating points for them all, and they fit in nicely with just a little bit of CA glue. Quick final look around the kit. And I think I'm done. So these are the final pictures uh, of what was a very enjoyable kit from Great Wall Hobbies. And then just stick it on the little mirrored turntable to give you all that overall kind of view of how this kit has turned out. Uh, so as you can see, the nose gear is ever so slightly off the ground. I need to add a little bit of weight uh, in the nose gear bay because I didn't quite have enough earlier on. Always the risk with tail sitters like this, uh, but that's an easy fix and it'll probably never get seen. So there we have it. That was the Great Wall Hobbies 144th scale Vulcan Kmar 2 build. Uh, so one of my thoughts on that kit. Uh, yeah, I think it, it's another good kit from Great Wall Hobbies. Uh, built the Victor the early part of 2021. Really enjoyed that kit. Uh, this one has even less parts because uh, as you saw in the video, that kind of upper and lower wing fuselage you've just got two pieces and that's it uh little bit of filler uh, in a few places uh the joins uh, i think the base of the fin had a tiny amount but a little bit on where where the wings mated uh on the underside but not you know not a huge amount uh, i wouldn't say that was problematic in any way uh but probably a little bit more maybe than i thought i had with the the victor but you know, uh, overall, relatively simple kit, but you know, a nice amount of detail captures the essence of you know the the Vulcan correctly. You know, looking at it on the shelf, it, it's got that kind of it's got that slight droop on the wings that the Vulcan naturally has. That kind of almost like arched back over the top of the fuselage. It kind of captures the essence of the shape. So. Uh, so yeah, so it adds to the V bomber collection that I've been building at 144 scale. So only only one more to go, which is the the Valiant, which uh, sadly is not a Great Wall Hobbies kit. Uh, it's a kit by Micromir, uh, which I'll hopefully build over the next couple of months because I'd like to get those uh, that little set completed. Uh, but how's ever the Vulcan, uh, I would thoroughly recommend it as a kit. Goes together well. Decals from Great Wall Hobby are, are actually quite good. You know, the overall finish on the kit, uh, nicely kind of restrained but clearly defined panel lines, certainly in 144 scale. Uh, they will take a wash if necessary, although 144 scale, I think you need to be a little bit restrained with how much of a kind of panel line wash you, you'd kind of put on a kit of that scale. Uh, so, yeah, so re really, really pleased with the outcome. It's, you know, that was, you know, a nice way to finish 2021. Maybe a little bit rushed toward the end to try and get it complete before the end of the year. Uh, but I don't think that kind of showed in the final result. Uh, maybe would have done things slightly differently if I decided I want a little bit more time with it. Uh, but not much would have changed. So, so I was happy with that as a conclusion for the year. Uh, so, yeah, so... Hopefully this video this video will be received well. Hopefully you've enjoyed watching. Uh, as I said earlier, if you're not a subscriber, you know, please give a subscribe, please give a thumbs up, like the video, and please drop a comment if you'd like as well and get in touch and ask any questions you have. Uh, however, let's leave it at that for the moment and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you in the next video very, very soon. So thank you all for watching. Goodbye and we'll see you soon. Bye for now.